Question number three of our student and nineteen biology question. A structural similarity between paramecium and amoeba is the presence of a one foot vacuum, b two contracted vacuum, c two nuclei, d one gullet. I will understand this question very well. I will talk a little bit about the structure of paramecium and the structure of amoeba. By the left, you have paramecium, and by the right, you have amoeba. So, talking about paramecium, paramecium is a unicellular organism, while amoeba also is a unicellular organism. The two organisms belong to the phylum protozoa. Though these organisms are unicellular, but I tell you, they still perform the functions that you can see that even we humans perform. Starting with the paramecium, it has the posterior part and what? The anterior part this anterior part is what it's the part that what that is blunt and what or rounded this is this, this is the anterior pa part and we have the what the posterior part that's it is pointed you can see the posterior part around this this very place this is the posterior part it is what it is pointed so now leaving that and talking about what a paramecium looks like paramecium is just like a slipper if you look at the slippers just compare it with this you see that it looks alike so it's like a slipper and what i want you to understand this thing very well paramecium the cytoplasm of the paramecium is divided into two parts we have ectoplasm and we have what endoplasm as you know that when we talk about endo endo means inner something that is inner why there's something that is inside why when you are talking about ecto ecto means something that is outside so in this organism though they are unicellular but they are still divided Cytoplasm is divided into two. So this two is what? In this ectoplasm that's around the outer part, we have what? We have the cilia, we have the pellicle, we have the trichocyte. Though the trichocyte is not obvious here, but I'll try to explain so that you understand it very well. Now, in the endoplasm, we have what? Some organelles. That's the concrete vacuole, which is even surrounded with radiating canals. As you can see here and what it also you can also see the full vacuum and what does this the full vacuum if you check it you will see the full vacuum when you are talking about it you still have what which is we have the mega nucleus and we also have, we have what we also have micronucleus i want to tell you that in paramecium we have two nuclei that's mega nucleus and micronucleus we are talking about this mega nucleus mega nucleus is what it's just like a beans or a kidney shape. It's shaped like a kidney or like a beans. If you look at the beans and the kidney, you see that they look alike. So that is the very thing. But beans, it looks like a beans and also it looks like a kidney. I'm talking about a micronucleus. It's very small and what? It's what? It's a roughly shape. It's a roughly spherical in shape. So talking about this, I want to tell you the functions of this very uh, organelle. Contracted vacuum, as you can see here, it performs osmoregulation and what? It ex excretes waste liquid products like uh, the sub ammonia. So it excretes it away. And what? And when I'm talking about this micronucleus, this micronucleus is what? I want to tell you the, because it is, I told you that it's two nuclei, right? So I want to tell you the two, the two things that you should observe in this very thing because they perform different functions. Meganucleus is what? It controls ordinary the activities of the cell. Why this micronucleus is what? That I told you that it's very small and what? Spherical in shape. It's what? It controls sexual reproduction. That's conjugation in the organism. So note this very thing. You could be asked in the question. You could, you could be given a question and you could be asked. That's why I want to take my time to do what? To explain this very thing to you so that you understand it better. So talking about... There's still some other organelles that we should talk about that we've not talked about. So let's just go back to cilia that I was telling you before. Cilia. If you are talking about cilia, comparing to human body, you see that this cilia looks like our hair. The hair that is on our body. The cilia just looks like that. So that you understand it, let's look. You just use it like that. Cilia looks like what? The hair that you can see in our, in our uh, on our body. Why pellicle? Pellicle is just like our skin. Pellicle is just like our skin that covers our body. It gives the paramecium just the shape. That's that's pellicle. So 
beside this pedicle inside this pedicle like around this side let me show you around this side the pedicle around this side in the pedicle covering the pedicle connecting it to the what to the endoplasm we have what we call trico trichocytes this very thing this very thing it is laid it is laid throughout throughout the place throughout 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 you will see it throughout throughout pardon me you will see it throughout this trichocyte it contains filaments which was which can be discharged either to trap a prey or what or to hold it or use it for offense and defense so note this because you could just be asked and with this you'll be able to do what if you pass your wise biology biology is not is very simple to pass if you know some certain things that's just it there is also what we call food vacuum this food vacuum it's just for 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 the digestion of the food that is gathered by paramecium so it's around the uh, gullet it's a part of the gullet so uh, uh this very this very food vacuum uh when it when it was when it's, it is collected when it, when the food is collected and it is sufficient that's when it, it will break so after it breaks it's what it drops inside the endo, uh, endoplasm and this very endoplasm what it utilizes it because the food is already digested by the food vacuum already it has already been digested so when when it um when it breaks like that another new food vacuum we got would be would be evolved around that gullet again and what we collecting food as well that's how they what they feed themselves because some people will be like ah they are unicellular but how do they feed themselves this is it is just through this very process their food is collected um uh, to the food vacuum is digested here and was being released to the endoplasm when you're talking about reproduction in this very organism could be true binary fission that's what that's a sexual reproduction and at the same time it could be what sexual sexual reproduction that's what true conjugation for knowledge sake a sexual reproduction produces offspring that is what this kind of Offspring is what it's just like it's identical to the original paramecium. But talking about the sexual reproduction, it's what it produces offspring that what that are genetically new. So hold that. You could also be asked that what is the mode of movement? How can they move? So in this very organism, paramecium, they move by what by beating of their cilia. This this their cilia is that earlier structure that I was telling you the other time. So talking about their sensitivity, it's what their whole body responds to light, temperature, chemical, and what and other contacts. Talking about reproduction, I've already told you that it's binary fission and conjugation. Talking about excretion, it's what it's by their cell membrane and uh, through all other things. You know, I was talking about contractile bacteria and all that. And respiration is what is inward diffusion of oxygen and outward diffusion of what of carbon carbon four oxide so talking about the what the absorption of food is what is from the food vacuum by cytolysis and diffusion talking about what the food digestion is what it's through the food vacuum now i was telling you that the food will be digested in the food vacuum because what before the food vacuum what breaks i'm talking about what talking about the food capture how the food is being captured is what it is by beating of the cilia in oral gulf mouth and what and the gullet talking about the second organism here it was the amoeba so i want to just tell you that it just looks like the paramecium i don't really need to divide some things because i've already divided it in paramecium so you also see things like that here and i want to tell you also that what it does uh, the mode like how they move Instead of using cilia, they don't have cilia, they what they have pseudopodia. I want to also tell you that what this very amoeba, it's what it doesn't have a regular shape. You know, I was telling you that paramecium it has a, a slipper shape. No, no, this amoeba it was doesn't have a, a regular shape, it's, it's irregular. It could be somehow today and tomorrow another another shape because it uses its pseudopodia. This very covering is its outer covering to do what to move. So it's it, it, the shape of the body changes uh, just like it is moving 
the, body, the shape of the body changes so that's that's the main thing and if it wants to eat it what it engulfs food through the pseudopodia through its pseudopodia is what engulfs food so and i, I have already to, to, told you about what the food vacuum it, it is being digested here before it what before it breaks and what it's what it's released to the cytoplasm just understand that it has only one nucleus unlike paramecium that you will see micro uh, micronucleus and uh, macronucleus after we've critically analyzed the structure that is in paramecium and amoeba so now let's talk about this question we are asked the structural similarity between paramecium and amoeba so looking at one food vacuole that's a one food vacuole talking about one food vacuole you will see one food vacuole in what in paramecium and you will see one food vacuole in what in amoeba so talking about it, the second one that's two connected vacuole looking at it i want to tell you that in paramecium you have two connected vacuole this is one this is another one so that's two connected vacuole so talking about the two nuclei I've already talked about the two nuclei I told you that paramecium contains what it contains macro nuclei and nuclear and nucleus and what macro nucleus so note that you could be asked anyway so you'll be able to just defend yourself why in amoeba you just only see one nucleus talking about option D that's one golet talking about paramecium you would see golet there but amoeba has no gullet at all so note that with this you should know that the answer is a one food vacuole that's the answer for the benefit of those that would like to navigate through this video you can check the description section for timestamps here you can just go to number seven uh, question number seven directly question number eight directly so that you won't waste your time while watching the one you've known already if you also need YC syllabus of this year, you can check the description section for the link to my blog. Here you can download the YC syllabus, either biology or even all other subjects. You can download the syllabus for free. By next week Monday, I will be uploading question number 11 to 20. Just sub the For admission seekers, I've been uploading on this channel. You can just click the subscribe button and also click the notification bell so this notification bell will enable youtube to notify you whenever i upload the video and as time goes on i would solve more questions that would help you to prep for biology this year question number four of white 2019 biology question the classes of plants the root system in diagram i and ii below represents respectively are a dicotyledon and molecotyledon B. Monocotyledon and dicotyledon. C. Dicotyledon and dicotyledon. D. Monocotyledon and monocotyledon. For us to understand this question very well, I would like to talk about the root system. Talking about the root system, we have the taproot system and we have the fibrous root system. So, I want to make this known to you that question number, last Roman figure one in this very question is what? It's the taproot. Why Roman figure two is the fibrous root? How how how, how would I how, how can I discern and all that that this very question this one is the tap root and the fibrous root? I would make this known now. The tap root it has what it has one main root. That main root it was it goes deep down into the soil. So around this main root you would have what small small branches. Uh, that smaller smaller branch branches. So these smaller branches what would what. It's called lateral extension. You will see them. There will be a lot of them. So this is the smaller, smaller, smaller branches that you can see. This is the smaller branches. Consider the fibrous root as well. You will see that they have a lot of, like a lot of roots, mass of roots arising from the base of the stem. This is it. The mass of roots arising from the base of the stem. So these very roots, they have uh, the same. They are equal in size. Some of them. So most of them, the what? They, 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 they are not really going deep down into the soil like tap root they are not going deep down into the soil they are what they are just at the base of the stem and these very roots would what would give rise to an, another numerous branch branches a lot of a lot of roots like that around them but they are not going deep down into the soil these roots are what are slender in appearance 
the question now is that how do we connect this root system with what the dicotyledon and monocotyledon so let me now tell you when you're talking about dicotyledon if you remove if you uproot a dicotyledon plant what you would find out there is what is the tap root if you uproot the monocotyledon plant as well you would also find what you would find fibrous root so that's the difference with this explanation you should know that the answer is e dicotyledon and monocotyledon respectively this is i dicotyledon and i i monocotyledon was well, 2019 biology question 5 what stage of self division is illustrated in the diagram a prophase b metaphase c anaphase d telophase we are talking about the prophase prophase is when the chromosomes become visible and in this prophase we have the early stage and we have what the late stage talking about the early stage here you will see that the chromosome are long and thin and what the nucleus starts shrinking in this very stage here you will see the formation of spindle fibers now talking about the late prophase here you will see that the chromosomes now i was telling you that it, it will be long and thin in the early stage but here it will be short shorter than it looks there shorter and it will be thick and very visible so another thing you would realize is that what the nucleus will disappear entirely you know i, I told you that the nucleus starts shrinking but in the late prophase the nucleus disappears entirely so now let's talk about metaphase when talking about metaphase metaphase is what is when the chromosomes aligned at the equator so like this video now you will see that the example given us here the chromosomes are aligned at the equator aligned at the equator so that's telling us that the correct answer to this very question is what is metaphase in this stage you realize that the chromatids are what are attached to the spindle by the central mesh. let me show you the spindle fiber this is the spindle fiber this this line that you can see here now so this very dot that is here yeah yeah so that's where we call what that's where we call the the central mare so the central mare is what is attached to this spindle fiber what is attached to this spindle fiber at the equator so that's when we call the metaphys just just for you to understand it this is what we call central mare so when we are talking about the anaphys this is when the chromatins of each chromosome will separate so after it is it, it is being separated it's what it will migrate through that spindle fiber that i drew the right time through the spindle fiber it will migrate to each poles now when we are not talking about the telophys telophys is the stage in which the cells become what it becomes constricted at the equator and when you are seeing it you see that the chromosome will now lose the thickness appearance the thick appearance it has it will look it is you lose it the spindle fiber i drew the other time will disappear as well and now you will see the what the two daughter cells formed when you see the two daughter cells formed you you, you realize that you, you've gotten back uh, the first stage that's interface don't forget the answer is metaphase for you to understand this very uh, mitosis and meiosis i will do a video that would uh, that you would, that will make you to understand it very well just I will try to do that video just try to click the red subscribe button and also click the notification bell so this will enable you to get notified when i upload videos that would help you for this wise question number six of was biology 2019 says the part labeled i is the a central male b spindle fiber c central d chiasmata so we are talking about central mare. Let's talk about central mare. Central mare is a region of a chromosome to which the microtubuli of the spindle attach during cell division. Talking about a spindle fiber, you know, I've already told you before. But talking about it now, you see, this is the spindle fiber. This is what we call spindle fiber. So, spindle fiber as well. So just note that. And um, we are talking about central, but central is cylindrical in shape. It is found in only animal cells.
you can find this only in in the animal cell it's not found in plant cell the talking about chasmata chasmata is what is the point of contact where the chrom homologous chromosomes exchange genetic materials so now let's look at well, what's the very answer of this of this question the very answer of this question is what is central because though this very i roman figure i is what this very roman figure i is pointing at the aster but looking at the options you can't see the aster here you can't see aster here so the nearest uh, or um, very the nearest part that is the, the, this line is pointing to is what is our central check it very well you see that what it's pointing to this very is a uh, cylindrical object here so it's what that's our central the answer of this question is what c central question number nine of was biology 2019 the rate of division of molecules between two media would be higher if a the difference in the concentration of the two media is what is low the difference does be now when talking about b the difference in the concentration of two media is negligible the difference in concentration of two media is i there is no difference in the concentration of the two media no diffusion is the movement of gaseous or liquid molecules from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration through the medium of air or what or liquid i tell you if there is no difference in concentration this what this molecule would not got will not move at all because it is just trying to balance the position on both ends considering a media that has five molecules let's write this this one has what five molecules another media and what that has five molecules as well you know the difference between these molecules and these molecules here they are what is the same thing is zero so that means the rate of the uh, division of the molecules will be zero there wouldn't be what any rate of division at all but if you have a high difference in concentration the what the molecule will what the rate of division will be what very high there will be division but if the rate of uh, the, if, if the difference between the molecules if, if you have no difference at all that means the, the division will not occur at all say but if there is a difference if the difference is now long and all that the rate of division will what would be would be high also here let me just show you this example see because it's considering something of what this one, let, let me say this one is 18 uh it has 18 molecules and now um, another one maybe this one let me just call this eight it's not drawn to scale but just to explain you know if 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 you have this media two media here uh, five um, the one of five um, here, the one of five molecules and the one of 18 molecules and you want the division to occur it will be faster than the one of what of eight if you are comparing this if, if, if you want the difference between this five and eight because the difference between five and eight is what three that's the th is that's three why the difference between five and eighteen is what is thirteen if you check it you know the one with this higher difference would what would be the, the rate of diversion there will be faster it's what it will be higher than what the rate of diversion of what of these five uh comparing it with eight do you understand you could also be asked that what and the importance of what of diffusion uh, let me now tell you that you know question number one uh, question number three or three about you treated amoeba and paramecium right so now talking about this amoeba you know the removal of waste products in this very small organism is what is is is, is being done by this process of diffusion so note that and also digestion of food and mineral salts are passed to the what to the bloodstream by this very diversion as well okay. talking about the movement of ear in the intercellular space of what of flowering plants it is being done by what by this very diversion as well it has a lot of what of advantages please read more about it question number eight of wise 2019 biology question 
an aerobic respiration as in the organism illustrated in the diagram below produces carbon dioxide and dash a ethanol b water c oxygen d glucose i want to tell you i want to start by telling you that this organism is what is yeast and yeast has an enzyme that's what is called zymase so this zymase what it helps during the process of fermentation you no know, as uh, fermentation is what fermentation is is, is is a process in which glucose is being broken down without what without oxygen as you can see right here we've already seen that what the glucose is being broken down by yeast uh, that's the the enzyme xylene zymes rather and what and what breaking down into what into ethanol plus carbon dioxide so this is the formula so please note this so the answer here is what carbon dioxide and ethanol question number nine of was 2019 biology question underground storage stems which grow horizontally in the soil are a bobs b runners c rhizomes d combs let me design divide this very thing before we pick the right answer what i'm talking about the bob is what is a rounded underground storage organ present in some plants consisting of a short stem rounded by fleshy scale leaves or leaf base in this very this kind of this this kind of storage stem is found in what is found in onion is found in what garlic and also potato this is the this is an example here yeah. this is an example of what of what we call box so talking about what talking about the second one which is what rhizome rhizome is a shoot typically leafless doesn't have leaf it grows from the base of a plant along the surface of the ground and can take root at any point along the length so example of this or uh, of, of of what would i call it of plants that exhibit this is what is strawberry you can just this is it, strawberry strawberry this is an example of what this is an example of runners so talking about rhizome rhizome is what rhizome is a continuous growing horizontal underground stem which puts out lateral shoots and adventitious roots at the interval at interval so talking about this now is what is uh, you have ginger here and the likes so example of this is what is this or is this very um obvious here so talking about combs combs is what talking about combs comb is a rounded underground storage organ consisting of a swollen stem base covered with scale leaves this is an example over here you have gladiolus as an example so just put that the answer to this question is rhizome because you, as well, according to what i divide i said what a continuous growing horizontal underground stem it's growing horizontally so that's it it's what rhizome question number 10 of wise biology 2019 muscle fatigue on the body of an athlete is due to a low ph b high oxygen con content c accumulation of lactic acid d accumulation of carbonic acid in this very question i want to tell you that there's what we call lactic acid formation stroke acc accumulation so in this very process it, it is it is being used where like in the like it's being done in examination of seed and uh, in the muzzle of an athlete here the glucose in the muzzle of the athlete what would break down and after it breaks down uh, through uh, like lack of oxygen why breaking down uh, due to lack of oxygen is what 
it will form lactic acid plus what plus energy this would be used to quickly generate energy so now you've seen that what the muscle fatigue in the body of an athlete is due to what accumulation of lactic acid that's c i'll try to upload question number 11 to 20 next week monday so subscribe and click the notification bell so that you would get notified when i upload it for question number one and two that i've solved you can check the description section and also click the video you can see on the screen right now it will help you to write to pass wise this year it includes the research i did on some of the students that did excellently well in wake on this positive note i end this video